Have you ever wondered how mathematicians determine the volume of complex solids? It's a fascinating journey into the world of geometry that begins with a simple cube or sphere, then expands into intricate designs like pyramids, cones, or even more complex solids. As we delve deeper into this geometric wonderland, we encounter different methods used by mathematicians to calculate volumes. These methods range from straightforward formulas for simple shapes to more complex strategies for intricate solids. And while these methods may seem different on the surface, they all share a common goal to measure the amount of space a solid occupies in three-dimensional space. But what if we told you there's an approach that combines simplicity and sophistication to calculate volumes? An approach that transcends the boundaries of shape and size, providing a unified method applicable to a wide array of solids. One of these methods, an ingenious principle, is known as Cavalieri's principle. Cavalieri's principle is not a new kid on the block. It has a rich history dating back to the 17th century. The principle is named after Bonaventura Cavalieri, an Italian mathematician who was a part of the mathematical revolution during the Renaissance period. Cavalieri was a student of the famous Galileo Galilei, and he was deeply influenced by his mentor's revolutionary thinking. Cavalieri's principle was a cornerstone of his work, and it was introduced in his book Geometria Indivisibilibus, published in the year 1635. The principle was a result of Cavalieri's fascination with the concept of infinity and his attempts to understand the relationship between solids and their volumes. In a time when the concept of infinity was still largely misunderstood, Cavalieri's principle was a beacon of clarity, offering a new perspective on the relationship between shapes and their volumes. So, Cavalieri's principle has been around for a while, but what exactly is it? Cavalieri's principle may sound complex, but it's actually a simple and elegant idea. It's a principle named after Bonaventura Cavalieri, a 17th century mathematician, and it's all about understanding the relationship between volumes of solids. Imagine you have two solids of the same height. Now let's slice these solids into numerous thin cross-sections like slicing a loaf of bread. If every cross-section of the first solid is equal in area to the corresponding cross-section of the second solid, then Cavalieri's principle tells us that these two solids have the same volume. Pretty neat, right? Let's delve a little deeper. If we slice the solids parallel to their bases, we create what we call congruent cross-sections. The principle holds that if two solids have the same height and their cross-sections are congruent, then their volumes are equal. This doesn't mean that the solids have to be the same shape overall, just that their slices match up. Let's consider an example. Think about a cylinder and a cone, both with the same height and the same base. If we slice them parallel to their bases, we'll see that each slice of the cone is smaller than the corresponding slice of the cylinder. However, if we were to stack all the slices of the cone on top of each other, they would fill up exactly half of the cylinder. So, according to Cavalieri's principle, the volume of the cone is half the volume of the cylinder. So, Cavalieri's principle is a powerful tool when it comes to comparing volumes of different geometric figures. It's not about the shape of the solid itself, but rather about the areas of its cross-sections. This principle provides a foundation for many calculations in geometry and calculus, and it's a fundamental concept in the field of mathematics. It's all about slicing solids into congruent cross-sections. If two solids have the same height and every cross-section of one solid is equal to the corresponding cross-section of the other, they share the same volume. Now that we understand the principle, we can see how it applies to different shapes. First, let's consider a cylinder. Imagine slicing the cylinder horizontally into an infinite number of infinitesimally thin disks. Each disk's area can be found using the formula for the area of a circle, pi times the radius squared. By adding up all these areas, or more accurately, integrating over the height of the cylinder, we can find the volume of the cylinder. This is a direct application of Cavalieri's principle. Next, let's examine a cone. By the same logic, we can slice the cone into tiny disks. However, these disks will not be the same size. They will decrease in size as we move up the cone. The area of each disk is still pi times the radius squared, but now the radius is a function of the height. Integrating over the height of the cone, we again find the volume. Despite the shape's complexity, Cavalieri's principle provides a straightforward method for calculating its volume. Lastly, let's consider a sphere. This is a more complex shape, but we can still apply Cavalieri's principle. Imagine slicing the sphere into infinitesimally thin disks. 
The radius of each disc will vary depending on where in the sphere the disc is located. The area of each disc is still pi times the radius squared, but the radius is now a function of the height from the base of the sphere. Integrating over the height of the sphere we can find the volume. Again, Cavalieri's principle simplifies what would otherwise be a complex calculation. In each of these examples the shape's volume is found by adding up the areas of many infinitesimally thin slices, a concept fundamental to Cavalieri's principle. Whether dealing with a simple cylinder or a complex sphere, Cavalieri's principle provides a powerful and effective method for determining volume. As you can see Cavalieri's principle is a powerful tool for calculating volumes. But Cavalieri's principle isn't just a theoretical concept, it has practical applications too. Let's dive into a few areas where this principle really comes into play. First up is architecture. Architects often need to calculate the volumes of irregular shapes when designing buildings. For instance, consider the design of a dome or a vaulted ceiling. These are not simple geometric forms but Cavalieri's principle allows architects to calculate their volumes accurately, ensuring that their designs are both aesthetically pleasing and structurally sound. Next, we move to the field of engineering. Engineers frequently encounter complex shapes particularly in the realm of fluid dynamics and heat transfer. When designing a car for example engineers need to calculate the volume of the vehicle's fuel tank, which might not be a simple geometric shape. Here, Cavalieri's principle helps to determine the optimal size and shape to maximize fuel efficiency. Now let's talk about computer graphics. Did you know that Cavalieri's principle is used in the creation of your favorite video games and animated films? Computer graphic designers use the principle to create realistic three-dimensional models. Whether it's designing a character or creating an immersive environment, the principle aids in calculating the volume of complex shapes, making the digital worlds we enjoy more lifelike. Lastly, let's not forget medical imaging. In CT scans and MRIs, cross-sectional images of the human body are taken and then later reconstructed to form a three-dimensional image. This wouldn't be possible without the help of Cavalieri's principle. It aids in calculating the volume of organs or tumors, providing vital information for diagnosis and treatment. Cavalieri's principle proves to be a useful tool, not just in the realm of mathematics but also in practical applications. So next time you marvel at a beautifully designed building or get lost in a video game, remember Cavalieri's principle. It's working behind the scenes to make those experiences possible. Cavalieri's principle is more than just a neat mathematical trick. It's a fundamental concept in geometry. This principle, named after Italian mathematician Bonaventura Cavalieri, has far-reaching implications that go beyond the realm of pure mathematics. Let's delve into why Cavalieri's principle is so significant. It's essentially a method for comparing volumes of different shapes, allowing us to see that if two shapes have the same cross-sectional area at every height, then they also have the same volume. This is a powerful concept as it gives us a tool to solve complex problems that might otherwise seem impossible. But Cavalieri's principle isn't just a tool for solving problems in geometry, it's also an essential foundation for more advanced mathematical concepts particularly in the field of calculus. You see, calculus is all about studying how things change, and one of the key ways it does this is through a concept called integration. The principle of Cavalieri is a precursor to the concept of volume integration in integral calculus. It provides a way to understand the idea of slicing an object into infinitesimally thin sections, summing the volumes of these sections, and thereby determining the total volume of the object. This is a fundamental concept in integral calculus, and it's all thanks to Cavalieri's principle. Beyond mathematics, Cavalieri's principle also plays a significant role in various scientific fields. For instance, in physics it's used to calculate the moment of inertia of solid bodies, which is crucial for understanding rotational motion. In computer science it finds application in computational geometry, contributing to the development of algorithms for spatial data processing. So we see that Cavalieri's principle is not just a mathematical theorem, it's a bridge that connects different areas of mathematics and science, and it's a powerful tool for understanding the world around us. Cavalieri's principle truly is a cornerstone of understanding volumes of solids, highlighting the beauty and simplicity of mathematics. It shows us that sometimes, the most complex problems can be solved with a simple shift in perspective.